So um, Maru's been around in the UK um, seven years. Um, I'm pretty analytical and I like to know um, where all of our customers are. Um, and the blues are um, education customers. Um, I can't quite see the edge of the screen. I think that's where it stops. Um, but you can see education is, is our bag. Um, it's 95% um, of what we do uh, in the UK. Um, and we've got a lot of experience that we've learnt um, across those 4,000 schools. So, you know, I hope that gives me the credibility to be able to speak to you today uh, with some knowledge um, of what we've seen. Um, over the years, things have changed. One, to, uh, you know, laptops for teachers. You might have teachers just um, taking the, the, the register um, around a school. Then we started to see you know, laptop trolleys, the netbooks, um, you know, lighter weight, you know, you could fit them in a trolley, you know, you might have your, your laptop trolley, put an access point on the top, dish them out, write everybody, log in, and it might have taken forever, um, teacher frustration, lack of faith in wireless, go back to what we used to do with the whiteboard or the blackboard, um, lots of technology in the cupboards. I want you to think today um, of, of wireless being a transport mechanism, okay? And I want you to think about wireless being um, a motorway and a transport network, and I want you to think about the devices, the iPads, the Samsung tablets, the Asus transformers, the Google Nexuses, the Surfaces. I want you to think about them as cars, okay? And if you think about um, the, the road network in the UK over the last 20 years, massive increase in number of cars. Road network has stayed relatively the same, okay? And we've seen much more traffic management systems come in, more roundabouts, more um, um, traffic lights to, to, to regulate traffic and keep everything moving, okay? Because there's a finite amount of space and we've seen more cars turn up okay so think of wireless in that um, if, you, if you can think of wireless in that way today I think it would really help you um, in any project that you've got going on so um, in terms of tablet uptake um, you can see here um, tablets and mobile devices rapidly overtaking desktops and laptops Okay, and I've got another slide on that here. Um, this is from Morgan Stanley Research. Back in 2010, smartphones and tablets started out selling desktops and laptops. Two things happening, principal means of connectivity is becoming wireless, and there's lots of wireless vendors out there that will talk to schools, okay? Um, and the second point is, um, there are many consumer devices turning up in education. So the principal means of connectivity is becoming Wi-Fi. And from a device and car perspective, and from a quality of motorway wireless perspective, I can assure you, if you buy cheap, you will buy twice, okay? Um, it's absolutely vital that if you want to deliver quality teaching and learning and performance, to lots of users simultaneously, buying the cheapest device and the cheapest wireless network you can find will result in poor performance and, and you will not achieve your vision of mobile teaching and learning, okay? That is just the fact, I'm afraid. Um, so just be careful about what you buy from a device perspective and what you buy from a wireless perspective. Okay, so in 2013, um, smartphones and tablets uh, were being used more than desktops and laptops. And I've seen that presenting over the years. I can't see anyone taking notes on a laptop today. Most of you are on smartphones or on um, tablets. Um, that's just the way of the world, and that's how it's going in education. Things are more flexible. 
you know, you turn on your tablet, you're there. It's not like, right, children, log on. It takes 10 minutes. You know, pain, um, teacher frustration, child frustration, um, damage laptop. Um, it, it is more flexible, easier, um, and easier to deliver. How fast is your... So, so th also think of Wi-Fi as your shiny taps on the end of your plumbing in your school. Your plumbing is your wired network. Is your wired network up to speed? Okay. If you go and put nice shiny taps on a whole load of dodgy plumbing, you're still not going to get great water flow out of those taps, no matter how much you've spent on the taps. Okay. So you've got to work your way backwards from the water main coming in, the plumbing, then the taps, then, then the devices inside your school. Okay? So you've got to look at how fast your wired network is. How fast is your broadband connection coming in? Where's your traffic going? Are you using the internet? Are you using iTunes University? Pulling loads of information, pushing it back up like Essa Academy do um, up in Bolton. There is a rule of thumb that you as, as, as a school, if you're a primary school and you've got a two meg connection coming into the school and you're dreaming of using um, tablets and YouTube and iPlayer and all this great stuff and, and, and doing it live over the internet, you've got no chance, okay? Unless you've got some sort of clever caching server in your school that, that kind of downloads it overnight and then you can access it just through the school network, not the broadband network, you're going to struggle, okay? So there's a rule of thumb that we've seen in education, and that is for every 1,000 users connected, hammering Wi-Fi, you need a minimum of 100 megabits per second. Connectivity coming into the school, okay? Um, now, I mean, generally speaking, I don't know, who, who's technical in here, in their school? What, are you a primary or a secondary? And what's your connectivity? Don't know, okay. Secondary? 100 meg, okay. So you're, you're you know, if, I don't know how far down the line you are, but if you were to start with, you know, 100, 200 devices, you're going to be fine. But over time, as you start doing stuff, it, it really need, it will need looking at. So, let's say you're going tablets, going BYOD. If you're going BYOD, what you're doing is you're saying to your students, bring in, chuck any old car on the motorway network. I don't care if you've not really MOT'd it, not looked after it, not pumped up the tyres properly, not put the oil or water in it for 12 months. Just chuck it on my motorway. Okay? You can imagine um, you're, you're not going to get great performance. So there are ways that you can segregate the traffic. You know, put all the students' own devices on one network. Limit the bandwidth on that network, okay? And don't for one minute expect that you're not going to get the odd problem, because you will. They'll bring in any old device that's never been updated, um, never had its oil and water changed, and you'll get an issue, okay? Don't expect BYOD to work perfectly. It will not because you're inviting anybody and anything onto your motorway network. 